There's a mechanism in organic chemistry I like to call the triangle mechanism or the triangle reactions. So you'll run into this maybe three or four times in organic chemistry. I have a simple analogy to help us understand the triangle reactions. In this analogy, we have a victim who's going to be assaulted or attacked. Somebody's going to come steal their money or punch them or do something to them. Okay, so we have an attacker and we have a victim in this scenario. First, let's look at the victim. The victim is somebody walking down the street and they're carrying their shopping bags on one arm and they also advertise to the world, which you should never do this of course, whether they're carrying money. If they're carrying money in their pockets, they have a big plus on their sign. Or if they're not carrying money, they have a zero or an O on their, on their sign. Now the one thing to remember, if somebody's carrying money, they tend to carry money in the pocket that's underneath the shopping bags because they want to hide the money and not be able to be pickpocketed as easily. So if there's money, a big plus, the money is stored in the pocket underneath the shopping bags. We also have an attacker in this scenario. Now the attacker can be either strong and aggressive. I drew this big, strong, aggressive attacker, or it could be a weak, timid attacker. If the attacker is strong and aggressive, they want to attack and they just want to get their, their violence out and they walk up and they'll just punch somebody wherever they can. The easiest way to punch somebody. Or if there's a weak criminal, the weak criminal is timid, they won't come in and just attack and throw a punch. But if they know somebody's carrying money, they'll be like a pickpocket and they'll sneak up and try to steal that money. They can't resist when there's money involved. So in this scenario, the weak attacker would look at these two victims and the weak attacker would never attack somebody without any money. The weak attacker would only attack somebody with some money. And the place this person would attack, if they're going to attack somebody with money, we want to remember will attack on this side of their body because that's where they're storing money. Now, this person without any money, the weak attacker would never attack them. But somebody who's strong would come and attack. Now, this person's just, they don't care about money. They're just going to come and attack and throw a punch into their body. If they're going to throw a punch, they will not throw the punch on the side with the bags. The punch wouldn't land very well. So if they're going to throw a punch, if they're going to throw a punch, they'll punch on the side where there's no bags and they can make the most violent attack. So they'll attack on that side. Okay, those are the things I want you to keep in your mind. Our victim either is carrying money or not carrying money. If they're carrying money, the money is stored underneath the bags. Weak attackers will not attack somebody with no money, but will attack somebody with money and will try to steal the money from underneath the bags. But a strong attacker would just walk right up and attack even somebody with no money and when they throw the punch, they throw the punch on the side with no bags. Okay, let's take this over to four scenarios you'll see in organic chemistry class and see how this scenario works in those reactions. These are four situations you might run into in organic chemistry where the mechanism ends up being a triangle reaction. Notice in all four of these, we have some sort of triangle. That's why I call it the triangle reactions. Now, these are the victims in our scenario and the things that will be attacked. Now, let's take a look at these victims and see if they're carrying money or not. This victim with the O at the top is not carrying any money. This victim with the plus, carrying a plus, it is carrying money. Now, the bags are these R groups attached to the triangle. Now, where if the bags are here and the person's carrying money, the money would be located on that pocket and not that pocket. This scenario, it's a mercury compound with a plus charge. This is in the middle of one of the alkene reactions you might learn. When we see this triangle with the plus at the top, it's carrying money, the money's in that pocket. This bromination reaction of an alkene, you will see a triangle in the middle of that mechanism the bromine has a positive charge on it. 
It's carrying money above its head, and the money is stored in that pocket underneath the bags. So if we have an aggressive, strong nucleophile, the strong nucleophile would attack somebody not carrying money. It would attack this epoxide. When we say strong, we mean, we mean nucleophiles or attackers that are aggressive. They're not going to wait around. So things we're looking for for a strong one would be an oxygen with a negative charge on it, an alkoxide. It'll be aggressive and want to come attack right away. Or maybe a carbon with a negative charge on it. Like, uh, you know, it could be whatever. So like a Grignard reagent would be a good, strong, aggressive attacker. So negative carbon or negative oxygen, they're aggressive, strong nucleophiles attackers. So let's take, oh, let's take a Grignard reagent. So if I have a Grignard reagent with a positive magnesium on it, I can think about that as a carbon with a negative charge. So let's pick methyl Grignard. So my negative carbon, I can maybe draw the arrow from those electrons. My negative carbon is going to attack. So if it's going to attack something with no money, it's aggressive. So what it will do, will punch. Well, which side will it punch? The side with the bags or the side without bags? It'll attack the side without bags. Now my methyl would make too many bonds to that carbon. So the ring opens up and the electrons go up onto that oxygen to make, let's redraw this. So my methyl attacked this carbon on the left. And now the oxygen is on the right side carbon. And it stays like that until maybe I add some acid or water. It gets quenched. And that would be my final product, this alcohol product. On these three scenarios, we have victims carrying money so now weak attackers can come in and attack. And by weak attackers, we mean nucleophiles that are happy the way they are and really don't have any interest in coming in and attacking another molecule. And these might be these might be neutral molecules like water, something that's very happy and stable, but has a lone pair of electrons which could attack if it's enticed in, or maybe an alcohol. So things that are stable, neutral, weak nucleophiles. So these things will sit there. Let's just use water for our example. If we have water and this compound, water and this compound, nothing would happen because the water's too happy. This neutral molecule, nothing would happen. But if instead we had this compound where the, where the victim is carrying money, and it's got a positive charge, now the water can't resist any longer. It'll come attack where the money is, and the money or that positive charge is stored most on that carbon right there. So the water comes and attacks that carbon. That would make five bonds on that carbon. We can't do that. So those electrons have to go up onto the OH. And that would make, so the OH is on the left side. I have these R groups on the right carbon, and I have my water, which attacked on the right side. And then another water could clean that up by grabbing that proton, and that could make this alcohol. So that's how that kind of reaction works. Just real quickly, you might run into a mechanism where you had this mercury, positive mercury. If you had water, which side would it attack? This weak nucleophile would be tempted to come in because it's carrying money. It'll attack that carbon, and the electrons will go up onto the mercury. Let's pick an alcohol. This is a weak, happy, stable molecule. But if the bromine is carrying a positive charge in money, it's storing some of that positive money in this pocket. 
the alcohol will attack that carbon, the oxygen and lone pairs will attack this right carbon, and the electrons go up under the bromine. And those go on to do other things. But I just wanted to show you how you can remember which carbon will be attacked. It always attacks from the back side, the bottom side, because the top side, there's defense being played by these big groups, the oxygens, bromines, or mercuries. So it always attacks from the back side. But that is what I call the, the triangle reactions. So for these four mechanisms, this is a great way to remember what will happen. And for the alcohol chapter, these are the keys for us on how to react Grignard reagents with epoxides to make alcohols. You may want to rewind and watch this one more time, but watching this a few times, this will get it in your head which side will be attacked. I hope that helps. Please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Keep watching these organic chemistry videos, and I'm hoping that we'll help you be successful this semester.